Welcome to the module on protozoa. In this talk, we're going to learn about the life cycle and reproductive features of protozoa. In this talk, we'll first learn about the different types of parasites and then learn about characteristics of protists, followed by the reproduction and life cycle of protozoa. Different eukaryotic organisms are able to cause infections and hence are referred to as eukaryotic parasites. These include protozoa, helminths, and parasitic lice. Protozoa are organisms that come under the kingdom of protists and they are usually unicellular. Helminths are worms that are multicellular and parasitic lice usually are insects. In this talk, we're going to focus on the protozoa that are able to cause infections. Protozoa are eukaryotic organisms that come under the domain of eukarya and the kingdom of protista. Protista is the most diverse kingdom of life because of the variety of organisms that come under this kingdom. These include fungi-like organisms that have a cell wall and are heterotrophs, but are usually unicellular. Also plant-like organisms which have a cell wall and are autotrophs also belong to this kingdom. These plant-like organisms can be unicellular while some of them are multicellular like different types of algae. In addition, in the kingdom of protista, we also have animal-like organisms, which are heterotrophs that lack a cell wall. These animal-like organisms can be ciliates that have cilia all over their cell surface to aid in locomotion, or flagellates, which have flagella that aid in their locomotion. They can also be amoeboids that have pseudopodia that enable them to move, or sporozoans that lack cilia, flagella, or pseudopodia but show a gliding motion and can form spores. Animal-like protists are also called as protozoa. Protozoans are a significant source of disease as millions of people contract and suffer from infections caused by protozoa. For example, 10% of the world's population is infected with the protozoan Entamoeba histolytica. On the other hand, 16 million are infected with the protozoan Trypanosoma. Each year, more than 500 million are infected with Plasmodium, which causes malaria. And of those 500 million, approximately 2 million die every year. In fact, 2.5 billion people live in places in the world where malaria is endemic. And thus, we can see that protozoa are able to cause many different types of infections that result in a huge toll on people's health. Protozoa that cause infections are able to gain entry into the host through a variety of mechanisms. These include the ingestion of food or water, and an example of such a protozoan is Entamoeba histolytica. This is a protozoan that causes the disease amoebiasis. Protozoa can also enter through physical or sexual contact, and an example of this is Trichomonas vaginalis that causes the disease Trichomoniasis. Protozoan can also gain entry into hosts through vectors like arthropods, and this is usually done through insect bites. 
Plasmodium, which causes malaria, and trypanosoma, which causes the sleeping sickness, are both able to gain entry into the host through these insect bites. Now let us look more into the structure of protozoans. So they're unicellular organisms and they don't have a cell wall. They're heterotrophs, which means they can't make their own food, unlike plants. And they usually are facultative anaerobes. When we look at the size of the protozoans, they can range from 2 to 100 micrometers. They engulf food through the process of phagocytosis or through pinocytosis. And when we look at the stages of protozoans, they can, some of them can have two stages. One stage is called as a trophozoid, and in this case, the protozoan is active and metabolically operational. It can grow and reproduce. However, there is another stage, which is the cyst stage. And in this case, the protozoan is dormant, and it's able to protect itself from environmental challenges. Protozoa can undergo reproduction in different ways. One of the most common ways by which protozoa reproduce is binary fission. Binary fission is a type of cell division when first the genetic material of the parent cell is replicated. Once the genetic material is replicated, the cytoplasm then is divided and you end up with two daughter cells that are equal in size. Another way of reproduction is budding. In the case of budding, a new organism develops from an outgrowth or a bud as shown in that blue circle. This outgrowth is formed in the parent cell and the outgrowth or bud keeps growing to form the daughter. Eventually, the daughter is pinched off from the parent and in the case of budding, the daughter is always smaller and not equal in size. Ultimately, the daughter will grow to become the same size as the parent. In this specific example, we are looking at budding in the case of Hydra, which is not a protozoan, but the concept is the same. In the case of Hydra, as shown in the figure to the right, we can have multiple buds that then give rise to the daughter organisms. Multiple fission or schizogony is another type of reproduction observed in protozoa where a parent cell can give rise to many daughter cells that are then released. Thus, in the case of multiple fission, we have more than two daughter cells that are produced from the parent. There are different types of multiple fission and miragony is a type of asexual reproduction that comes under multiple fission. In the case of miragony, the nucleus of the parent divides to form several nuclei, which is called as karyogamy. Once karyogamy occurs, then there is a distribution of the cytoplasm around the different nuclei to form the daughter cells. The parent cell that undergoes the process of miragony is called as the merant or the schizont. It should be noted that in many cases, miragony is also referred to as schizogony. The daughter cells that are formed through the process of miragony are called as merozoids. Gametogony is another type of multiple fission that is observed in protozoa. And in the case of gametogony, we again see karyogony happening in the parent cell, followed by distribution of the cytoplasm. However, the parent cell, which is also called as the gamont, will then actually give rise to the male and female gametes. It should be noted that the gamont is already haploid, and hence there is no type of reduction division, which is similar to meiosis, that is required to form the gametes. And thus, in the case of gametogony, we are seeing multiple fission with the purpose of giving rise to gametes. Sporogony is a type of multiple fission where the male and female gametes that arose from gametogony fuse to produce a diploid zygote. The diploid zygote then undergoes reductive division 
which is similar to meiosis in the sense that four haploid daughter cells are formed, but occurs through a mechanism that is different than meiosis. The resulting haploid daughter cells that are formed will undergo karyogamy, where their nuclei will divide to form many different nuclei. We will then have the cytoplasm reorganize around the nuclei, and they will finally be released. And these daughter cells that are released are called sporozoids, which are haploid daughter cells. Parasitic protozoa are able to complete their life cycle in either one host or multiple hosts. For example, Trichomonas vaginalis is a protozoa that is able to complete its life cycle using only one host. Trichomonas vaginalis is transmitted through direct sexual contact and it cannot survive for longer periods of time if it is outside the host. Similarly, Entamoeba histolytica, which causes amoebiasis, is able to complete its life cycle in one host as well. Entamoeba histolytica produce cysts that are passed in the fecal matter of the infected individual, and the transmission from one individual to another is usually through the consumption of contaminated food or water that has these cysts. And thus, Entamoeba histolytica is able to complete its life cycle in one host as well. Some protozoa complete their life cycle in multiple hosts. In such scenarios, the definitive host is the host in which sexual reproduction of the protozoan occurs, while the intermediate host is the other host in which asexual reproduction or asexual development can occur. The perfect example of a protozoan that is able to complete its life cycle in more than one host is plasmodium, which is the parasitic protozoan that causes malaria. One of the hosts of plasmodium is the mosquito. When a mosquito that is infected with plasmodium bites a human, then the plasmodium that is present in its saliva gets injected into the human and thus it gains entry into the human host. Once in the human host, the plasmodium goes to the liver and infects the liver or hepatic cells. In the infected hepatic cells, plasmodium undergoes multiple fission to give rise to merozoids that are released from the mature liver merond or schizont. The merozoids can then infect red blood cells or erythrocytes and within the erythrocytes they can again undergo merogony to give rise to many merozoids that can continue the infection process. However, some of these erythrocytes can undergo gametogony, and these plasmodium in the erythrocytes that undergo gametogony will ultimately give rise to male and female gametes. Complete development of male and female gametes happens in the mosquito. Thus, when a mosquito bites a person infected with plasmodium, then these red blood cells that harbor the gametocytes of plasmodium are then able to enter the mosquito and complete the development to form the male and female gametes. These male and female gametes then fuse in the mosquito to form a zygote. And then the zygote is able to undergo multiple fission in the form of sporogony to give rise to sporozoids that are then present in the salivary glands. These sporozoids that are present in the salivary glands of the mosquito can then go back into a human when that infected mosquito bites a human, and thus the life cycle goes on. Thus, in the case of plasmodium, we were able to see miragony happening in the human, followed by gametogony, and then sporogony. Since the formation of zygote, which is a hallmark of sexual reproduction, occurs in the mosquito, the mosquito is the definitive host, while the human is the intermediate host. With this, we come to the end of our talk, where we learned about different types of eukaryotic parasites, followed by the reproduction and life cycle of protozoans.